right UCO is now mechanically sound we just need to get the outside looking good some salt here it has a little bit of a shine to it we had it detailed when we first got it although I would say it was more of a um, like a kind of a once over type thing but you can see there's lots of marks we had a pinstripe we took off there's black there's some rubs on here from uh, different things eventually I'd like to get the anti-fouling paint off but that's gonna be another episode um, whenever I can I've replaced any of the through hole fittings um, this one probably could be replaced at some point I'd also like to polish up the stainless steel rub rail and it's just pretty much generally chalky you can see it on my hand here so what I did was I went online and I found a place called Drake's Detailing. He has a YouTube channel and he's apparently the guru of boat detailing. And I have no affiliation with him and I don't know him, but uh, I watched a lot of his videos and he basically shows you all the steps that you need to do to go from having a boat in various stages of oxidation all the way up to disaster. Uh, and all the different steps that you take, the different products. He sells products um, and you know, recommends different grits of abrasives and things like that, and also different machines. And uh, by the time you have somebody professionally detail your boat, you can spend a lot of money. Ours is 27 feet, and I guess kind of the going rate is $20 per foot per step. So. A 27 foot boat would be $540 if you wanted it wet sanded and then another $540 if you wanted it compounded with a heavy cut compound and then another $540 if you wanted polished and then if you want to do ceramic coating things like that so it can add up quickly but all the things really look nice and it's quite an investment so you know I wanted to learn how to do it myself and I bought the stuff I needed to do, so I'm going to try my hand at detailing. Um, not to mention it makes the boat look nice. So, uh, some of the different things I bought, I'll show you. And then I'll show like a before and an after. And we can see if we can get this thing shining. They're blowing away in the wind here. 1,000 grit sandpaper. It's a... Uh, whoops, everything's blowing away. Oh well, I guess I'll just let it keep blowing away. Merca Abrolon, which is a wet sanding uh, paper, and it's on a six inch foam disc. And then after that, uh, 2000 grit, and uh, that'll get out a lot of oxidation, swirl marks, things that uh, make it look bad. Then I have an orange disc, I've already practiced with it a little bit, an orange foam pad which is like a medium cut pad. The different colors are different degrees of abrasion. And I guess you wouldn't think foam would be abrasive, but it is when you use the right products. And um, with that, I put it on this. I bought a DA, a dual action uh, buffer. It's variable speed. This one is uh, our, it's from Harbor Freight. It's actually a cheap um, buffer that's rated pretty well. And I use that for sanding and, um, you know, for the wet sanding and then also to use the heavier cut compound. Um, I'm walking around here. This other the heavy cut compound that I use uh, is called Chop Top and it was recommended by Drake uh, from Shine Supply. They're out in California. I'm in Florida, so it took a while to get here. Anyway, it's got all the instructions, how you put it on, all that stuff. And uh, then after that, there's a finer polish, classic finish plus, and that's supposed to really bring out some shine. And then you can do ceramic coatings and all that too. Um, but when I go to do the finer polish, I bought a Makita rotary. 
Um, I have a DeWalt rotary that I use for when I do welding and all. It's a grinder, but it spins too fast and it's not um, adjustable. This one is adjustable. It was rated really well, and uh, it has it came with two different lambswool pads. One is yellow, and then one is white. And the to get started, I sprayed some water on the hull and then wiped it down with a microfiber cloth to get rid of any salt or any dust or dirt that was on there left over from the last wash. Then I used little pieces of painter's tape to mark off about a 3x3 three three section where I'm working. It's kind of hard to see when you're using white compound on a white hull in the sun. Then setting the polisher on about three and a half, I went side to side, up, down, and side to side, back and forth over everything, polishing it. It took me a couple minutes to get the rhythm of how the machine works and how much pressure to use and what speed to use. So I, this is my first time doing all this, so I had to kind of just figure it out as I went along. But i do it a little bit and then wipe it off, and I'd start seeing a little bit of shine come up. And uh, then this stripe here that we had peeled off uh, still had like an outline, although it was kind of raised. I guess it's the adhesive or something from the stripe. But I figured I was going to sand that off. So I used some water and that uh, Merca Aberlon 1000 grit um, sanding disc. And I was trying to go gently at first because I didn't want to take off too much gel coat. Um, but just back and forth and up and down and back and forth. And then gradually I would uh, turn up the speed a little bit and add a little bit more pressure. And I ended up using two or three pads on each side just to um, to get most of the definition of the stripe out. You can see here it's a little bit lower than it was but it's still pretty visible. So I went back to it again with a little more enthusiasm and then uh, I was able to get it down to an acceptable level so I could hit it with the polisher and it would look pretty good. You can see that the stripe is almost gone now, and then I used some chop top on the yellow lambswool polisher on the Makita and had it turned up to about three and a half, I guess, and back and forth, up, down, back and forth, trying to figure out the best way to put pressure on it, and uh, it started to bring the shine up pretty nicely. The next thing I had to deal with is get the old 23-year-old pinstripes off of the top side of the boat, as well as the old lettering. It was on there pretty good, and I'll save you the pain of hours of work here. I used a heat gun and a razor blade and acetone, and I was finally able to get it off. It was very painstaking, and for some reason, the back part uh, towards the stern came off easier than the front uh, up by the bow. I don't know if it had to do with sun exposure or what, but... Once I finally got into a little rhythm and got it heated up, I could peel it off like a half an inch at a time. Got the top done with chop top. Now we have to do the other side. Here you can get a good idea of how faded and chalky everything was. There wasn't much of a shine to it. Now with the other side, I'm looking at about another two hours worth of heat gun, razor blade, acetone, rinse, repeat. This little bit's taken me about a half an hour to do. More wet sanding with 1,000 grit sandpaper.
when I'm sanding, I use medium pressure and keep the DA at about four and a half. This is the end result after using the wool pad on the rotary and working on it for a few minutes with the chop top. I found another sticker on the transom that needed to be removed and that wasn't coming up either so I had to do the same thing with heat gun, razor blade, acetone. Finally I'll have to wet sand and compound and polish the rear of the boat as well as scrub the non-skid. Also, some previously repaired spots of gel coat that needed to be sanded down and feathered in as well. Once that was all done, I got to work cleaning the non skid with my rotary brush on my DeWalt and also some purple power that was diluted 3 to 1 with water. There were a couple little stains that I couldn't get out. But after I finish cleaning everything, I'll hit those with some acetone in a white rag to see if I can get those out of the gel coat. It is 23 years old. Even though it looked kind of clean before I started, you can see where I stopped scrubbing with the rotary brush and it really makes a difference. These are a couple of those marks that I'll try rubbing with acetone. This combination works really well for cleaning and Purple Power is pretty inexpensive and you can buy it at Walmart. You can see some of the surfaces were pretty well stained. Everything came out pretty clean and then it was ready for some polishing. Next I'm using Classic Finish, which is a, I guess a finish polish, and I'm using my 6 inch yellow lamb's wool pad on the Makita rotary, set it at about 4, and then after I'm done with that and get it all wiped down, I'm going to put uh, Just Car Power Lock on it, which is a sealant. You can see, really came out nice.